strict rainbow table lookup service there. Um, ISC and Java servers are in that network. You will find uh, hack and uh, ISC servers in there. You will. This is uh, also a commonly used ISC network among CCC. Uh, the C official CCC Java server has a lag in there. Um, FTP CCC DE is there, so you can download stuff without people seeing what you're downloading there. Um, we're making high performance computing available there. Some people had just too many ATI and NVIDIA graphics cards and decided to get them together because they're very useful when it comes to the point, some um, points upstairs, uh, the rainbow table. Um, we kind of cloud computing. We can stream multimedia events. So if you have a talk in a hackerspace, you can just stream that to a different hackerspace and watch it there. And the very interesting thing, thing is um, you can kind of pick the nationality you go out to the traffic. So if you want to, you can choose uh, proxies to become German, Dutch, American, or whatever is on the KS VPN. And more stuff still not mentioned and working here. But I think a lot of you are interested in the CTF, and now we'll come to see the CTF with the virus. Uh, I apologize in advance for sounding like a dead frog. I'm still, voice is still recovering from last night. Oh, forgot to move that picture. So um, the war zone is uh, more or less a, a copy of the original Chaos VPN slash the Gorlink network. It's just another spun up instance of the same thing, but used for an entirely different purpose. Um, the uh, Agorlink uh, KS VPN network is, you know, uh, designed to be just universities, hackerspaces, people learning all the time, uh, people mirroring talks between uh, one space or another, uh, you know, the VPN tunnels that we, um, you know, would test beta software on, uh, uh, VoIP channels for people to, you know, call back and forth in the middle of a talk. Maybe there's a talk going on at PS1 that somebody in New York really wants to watch, and they want to ask questions and stuff like that. That's that's um, Warzone is just all pain all the time. Uh, the idea is to build this entirely isolated um, no man's land of data uh, where each, uh, each, each node gets its own little chunk of the network to host whatever game they want to host. Uh, we come up with a, you know, kind of a loosely adapted global scoring system and people just lay into each other. So if it's on that network, it's hostile. Um, so, okay, so Warzone is like a gore link, but evil. Uh, the idea is um, right now, for the most part, uh, the concept of a CTF or, uh, you know, challenges that are very similar, most of the time are relegated to a conference setting. You either go to a camp or you go to a con, and, you know, there's, no, there's, there's only so many games you can run because you only have a certain amount of time. Uh, you know, moving hardware around the world is expensive. So, you know, uh, sometimes there are types of challenges that aren't accessible. A lot of the offline challenges that people play, like Root Wars, are, you know, kind of niche and very tiny, and there's no scoring linking. So there are, there are built-in limitations to playing these kinds of games in a conference setting. So the idea of the Warzone is to give this other space uh, where anybody um, where with an idea or with a contest concept I can host these ideas all the time, hopefully so that there's some more freedom for more exotic challenges at some of the conferences. German keyboard cannot use. Um, uh, so the targeted groups uh, for people playing on it, uh, obviously hackerspace is, um, you know, kind of the point. Uh, university groups, security research groups, anybody who's just looking for uh, an ever-present, ever-evolving uh, CTF style challenge, you know, just, just constant brain teasers, you know, people that um, you know, keep going. Um, so the layout of the network is each node on Warzone is given a slash 24, and the dot one of that slash 24 uh, is your info page. Or basically, uh, you know, if, you, if, if you're on a node and you decide you want to go play somebody's game, you, you know, you look up the giant directory and, you know, you go, oh, it's, you know, it's PS1's hosting some game, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to them. So you go to their dot one and there's this web page that has all the services that they're hosting and how to play and how to score and all the, you know, the ins and outs of, of the, whatever their challenge may be. Um, and the idea is that this, this dot one, you know, whatever the, the, the gateway 
is not this is the only part of each node that's not malicious. Uh, this is this is the portion where you find out how to play, and not the portion that attacks you. Um, and there are rules, obviously. Um, I'm not going to go over these particularly because you know we're still kind of forming, you know how this is going to work, um, uh, and there'll be a more permanent fixture. But the idea is basically anything goes as long as you don't attack the hosting network itself, um, whether it be botnet challenges, people hosting uh, uh, web stuff, or you know you can log in and uh, elevate pr um, credentials. Uh, at Nellspace, we're actually talking about a project where we'll take live malware and defang it, but leave the infectious portions and hide keys in them and let people download them and try to launch them at each other. Anything goes as long as you're not stopping other people from playing. That's, that's the, the spirit of the rules. Um, yeah, that's, you want to you wanna give the, the fly? You wanna give no. the ending things? Oh, no, you can do that if you. No, that's cool. <laughs> okay, there are some guys we need to use. Thank you for that. Um, no, first of all, any questions regarding the CTF stuff? You don't have a lot of questions today, does it? Is that connected to the Ninja party last night? <laughs> okay, uh, we need to say thank you to several people. One of them was Hega, who has built up the an idea of this of the. VPN for the phone system years ago. Goose, who's uh, the developer of Ting, uh, he pretty much likes our hacker spaces and uh, Ting development is done at the moment uh, together with us. You have seen some wishes for the future. Um, Eric Michaud is one of the Americans who kept the pressure uh, and Openfly who's doing the images for, for example, for the Fonera. And a lot of other people who uh, helped to contribute in the code and stuff like that. Uh, yes. And we have uh, a wiki where we contact all this information. This wiki is the Hamburg CCC wiki, and if you enter Chaos VPN in Google, it will directly get you there. The source is at GitHub, so if you want to have a look at what we are doing, uh, you can just do that very easy. Um, the Tink website is tink-vpn.org. And yeah, usually you will find us on the Hackend ISC as mentioned on the channel Pound Cares VPN. Are there any questions? Two. Okay. No, they are two separate networks. Uh, it's this. Uh, okay, the question was if Warzone and Chaos VPN are two different networks or if they just uh, don't attack each other rule. Uh, there are two different networks. One of the reasons is Warz uh, Chaos VPN is only for hacker spaces while Warzone is also for university and security groups and other groups of interested people. So it's different target groups, different ideas. It's just the same stuff we're using. Yes. Uh, this is not, this is just, we did it for us, but it's all open source. And we already have a lot of people, a lot of feedback from people to, who use it for their own network. Uh, I think the general idea to have a mesh network uh, and the general requirements we have are requirements that a lot of people have to the network. This is why it's open source. There's documentation how to set it up for yourself. It's, you'll just all find that on the wiki. And we have a network image from the Chaos VPN to give an impression of the size. Do but this is, shall we just show that? Yeah. Are there any more questions? Okay. Then I'll try to find. So if you want to get involved in uh, one or another, 
just uh, as we still have some time left, come over here and we can exchange data. The most, um, uh, all the information you will need is on the wiki. Just Google for Chaos VPN and if you want to be more detailed, Google, Google for Chaos VPN, CCC and Hamburg, you will find that. Um, yeah, there's one more question. Uh, there is a setup. There is, since there are two different networks, do we need two different devices? The answer is no. The, if you use a decent computer with more than one network card, or if you use the Fonera, the switch on the Fonera access point supports VLANs, so you can put Chaos VPN on one port uh, network without without any Chaos VPN at all on the second network. Um, then you can. Uh, do what on on the third network and for example anything totally different on the fourth port. Mm -hmm. um, Ting is using this turn device so you can set up more than one tunnel which is basically the concept behind Ting and you can, you don't have any problems running two or more instances of Ting at the same time. It's working pretty good for me. Um, this should be an overview of the network status at this minute. This page is generated every minute and it's a bit slow. It shows all the uh, notes on the star of the network. Are there any more questions as this is loading? Sorry? Uh, so the question is what designates a security group on the war zone? Um, both networks are web of trust, so ask and find out. More questions? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, the star is loading very slowly as it's a very big image. Um, we'll just keep it loading, maybe post it up. And first of all, say thank you for uh, staying here and uh, talking and listening. If you want to get involved in one or another, uh, feel invited to just come in the front. And yeah.